Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So it's no big surprise that the politicians and bureaucrats that run the state of California absolutely loathe the Second Amendment. I mean, they cannot stand it to the point where they'll just create laws anyway and just go right through it as if it doesn't exist. Every single year we get new laws that just add to the stack of existing gun laws in that state. Well, now, thanks to a document that was just released, we know exactly what they think about the Second Amendment. As a matter of fact, they're now telling you what the Second Amendment says you're not allowed to do. And I, I gotta be honest, at first, I thought this was satire. I thought it, it has to be a joke, but no, this is real. According to California, you're not allowed to do this. So let's talk about it. Now, real quick, before we get started, I am proud to be sponsored by Attorneys on Retainer. If you guys remember, I used to be sponsored by another company that was somewhat similar until I found out that it was somebody sitting in a cubicle at an insurance company somewhere determining whether or not I am actually covered. I could not recommend that anymore. I could not suggest it anymore. I had to get away from that. And I am happy that I did because Attorneys on Retainer, they are actual attorneys and they are not going to turn you down if something is questionable. If you carry to defend yourself, I implore you to check out Attorneys on Retainer. There's be a link and a discount down in the description box and you guys need to check them out. When you call Attorneys on Retainer, instead of getting somebody at a cubicle or somebody in a call center somewhere, you actually get an actual attorney which starts your instant attorney client privilege. Everything that you say to them is going to be confidential. It is an extremely important thing to have in your wallet. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here. So just yesterday, the state of California filed their response brief to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in a case called Nguyen v. Bonta, which challenges California's 1 in 30 law. Now, if you know the 1 in 30 law, basically means you can get one thing within a 30-day period, and during that 30-day window, there's just a complete prohibition on you acquiring anything new. Uh, it is an absolute travesty. It's completely unconstitutional, but they continue to do it anyway. Nonetheless, we got an injunction in that. California didn't like that, and now it's sitting before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals wants briefs. Well, California's brief was one of the most eye-opening things that I have ever seen. Basically, what California is saying is that, well, yes, you do have a Second Amendment right, but it really only covers two things, the right to keep and the right to bear. The right to acquire isn't actually specifically mentioned in the Second Amendment, and therefore, that's not a right. It does not exist. You only have a right to keep and a right to bear. Now, I got to warn you, if you're not sitting down, you might want to take a seat because this is pretty mind numbing again from the California DOJ where it says introduction. The text of the Second Amendment plainly does not guarantee a right to purchase an unlimited number of arms within a 30 day period. Nevertheless, plaintiffs who are uh, Nguyen and the FPC advanced an unduly broad understanding of the Second Amendment that cannot be reconciled with the Supreme Court precedent. In their view, any regulation that touches on firearm sales requires the government to proffer identical historical analogs from the founding era only, regardless of whether previous generations encountered the problems addressed by the regulation. Well, yeah, because that's the instructions that were given to you by the Supreme Court. Uh, so, yes, that's kind of exactly what we think. Now, they go on to say, plaintiffs misconstrue the requisite analysis on multiple fronts. Under a proper application of Supreme Court precedent, plaintiffs fail to establish the California Penal Code sections 27535 and 27540 regulate conduct that is presumptively protected by the Second Amendment. So what they're saying is that it's not presumptively protected by the Second Amendment uh, and that the Second Amendment doesn't even apply here. Essentially, what they're trying to do is what other courts are doing. Uh, they're trying to get around the Bruin analysis, but they continue to say, in fact, as commerce regulations on the sale of arms, the challenged laws are presumptively lawful. And even if this court were to assume that purchasing multiple arms within a 30-day period were presumptively protected, the record shows that the challenge laws are consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation, especially when applying a more nuanced approach. Now, shockingly, this is actually where it gets worse, where they start off with their argument. And argument one is plaintiffs have not established that purchasing multiple arms within a 30-day period is presumptively protected by the Second Amendment's text. Uh, it says, 
at the threshold stage of the Bruin inquiry, a litigant invoking the Second Amendment must first establish that the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's contact, uh, conduct, excuse me. And I would say that acquisition is definitely conduct protected, but they're saying no. The conduct protected by the Second Amendment's text is the keeping and bearing of arms, and the, they cite the Constitution, which means the right to possess and carry arms in case of confrontation, and then they cite Heller. The plain text of the Second Amendment directly protects one thing, the right to keep and bear arms. Plaintiffs have not shown that their proposed uh, course of conduct, purchasing an unlimited number of arms within 30 days, implicates that right, and then they cite Bruin. Now, I'm not going to go any further than that because I think you guys pretty much got the gist of California's argument here. They're basically saying that you having the ability to go out and get something is not conduct that is protected by the text of the Second Amendment because the text actually says to keep and bear. And since it doesn't have the language of acquire or acquisition, then that's not something that's covered by the plain text. And so what they're saying is, is that we're reading into things way too broadly here. Okay, when we take a look at it, we, we have this, you know, unduly broad uh, view of what, what the text actually says and or protects. They're saying, no, 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 it, it's much more narrow than that. What it says is keep and it says bear. And so that's all you have a right to right there. Everything else is not conduct that is protected by that right. I, that's where California has taken it these days. And again, they're only doing that to avoid the Bruin standard because if they can somehow convince the court, which I guess with the Ninth Circuit, it wouldn't be that difficult, but if they could somehow convince the court that the text is not implicated, then they wouldn't have to worry about history and tradition, right? They want to avoid that because they know that if they go back in time, uh, even from the, the founding of the country or the ratification in 1791 up to the reconstruction era uh, in 1860s, right? Even if they took that entire swath of time to look for an historical analog that they could use to defend their laws that exist today, they know that they won't be able to. So what do they do? They grasp at straws, anything that they could possibly do. If they could just say that it's not covered by the plain text, then that would basically end the historical analysis altogether and they don't need to worry about that. And that means that their law can stand as it is today. But uh, what they're saying, and if you remember reading this in the very beginning, they're basically saying that a problem like this didn't exist back then because people didn't do that, which is absolute BS to begin with. Uh, there was privateers and merchants and, you know, all sorts of people that would just buy things and, you know, they'd buy them by the case. But that would be, uh, you know, something that they could compare at the time. And there was no regulations on that at the time whatsoever. And so again, they know that the, the historical analysis aspect of Bruin would absolutely shut them down. So again, that's what they're saying. You don't have a right to acquire more than one in a 30 day period because you already own that one now. Uh, the keep and bear part has been satisfied. They're good with that, right? You, you've satisfied the two things that are actually on there or what they call the one right. And uh, they don't need to worry about you anymore. You, you got the one, so you're fine. So this is something that we really need to pay attention to. This is their new tactic in order to get around the Supreme Court precedent is just by simply ignoring the text of the Constitution altogether. And I wanted to make you guys aware of that because that's a very slippery slope. If they can narrow down the text to something that specific and there's judges out there who are willing to go along with it just for the sake of, you know, activism or whatever, then that is what they're going to do. That's the strategy that you're going to see played across this country. It doesn't matter if it's California or New York or Illinois or New Jersey or Hawaii. You're going to see all of these states that just want, are, they're just looking for a way out of Bruin. You're going to see them try this exact same thing. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, oral arguments are going to be in early August. And then uh, we'll have our answer on Nguyen V. Bonta, the whole one in 30 thing. Because I remember uh, when I lived in California for 42 years, that didn't always exist, but it existed for a long time. And it was a huge pain. So hopefully it'll uh, it'll get overturned because it's blatantly unconstitutional. But I wanted to uh, you know make you guys aware of what California is trying to say about it. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.